good morning guys welcome back to poor boy's little homestead thanks for dropping in what am i doing let me lay this saw down over here what y'all looking at here guys is a five foot long by five foot diameter piece of corrugated some type of plastic cross drain pipe y'all know what that's finna be Guys, that's going to be one of the best raised beds. Actually, I'm going to get two out of that. And then down here on the end, it's got a bell. And I'm thinking about cutting that off. And I have me about a 10-inch ring, 5-foot diameter, that I can do something else with. But this is going to be the best raised beds you can have, guys. Guaranteed lifetime. You ain't gonna outlive this. It won't rot, it won't rust. And there's what your raised bed is gonna look like. Five foot diameter. You might say, well them things are expensive. Yes they are. A 20 foot of that pipe right there where I'm from is getting up there around $2,500. But when you get lucky like I did, I got a cousin that's in the construction work. He done some jobs. He had this piece left over. And a five foot piece you can't use. It ain't, it ain't long enough to use for nothing. And he let me have it. But talking about price guys, if you look at some of them raised beds they make and sell out there, for the price of them, if a man was going to buy several of them, he could buy a 20 foot joint of this, get him 10 raised beds, and also you ain't got to get the 5 foot, you could get the 4 foot, 36 inch, whatever you want. But if you're going to buy them birdie style raised beds and you look at the price of them, then you got to pull them together. And they're not going to last a lifetime. These right here will last you a lifetime. And I can cut it way quicker. And I need even get them other beds out of the box they come in. Much less assemble them. But if I decide I ain't going to leave this one a little bit taller. I can cut this off and use this ring for something. But I might leave it this height right here. But what I'm going to do when I decide where I want them, I'm going to do just like I've done my other big raised beds. I'm going to go out here, I'm going to cut me a bunch of old wood and stuff, and I'm going to stuff in the bottom of it, cardboard, leaves, anything you can get scratched up. Fill it over halfway with all that wood and stuff. Then I'll fill it on up with my compost and soil. Ain't no sense in filling the whole thing up with soil. Plus, when you fill the bottom of it up with that wood and stuff, especially if you got, you can get your hands on some sawdust, wood chips and all that, and just fill the bottom up, over time, that's going to rot down. It's going to attract all your worms, all your good insects. It's going to hold moisture in there. And that's what made me, after this summer gardening, Y'all knew I had all these wick pots and stuff. But they work good, but they're still so small. These big raised beds I got out through here, I didn't even ever have to water them. I may have watered them once, but we got enough rain, they hold enough moisture and stuff. But that ain't all I got. But not only did he have a piece of that five foot, he had a piece of this here, three foot. This is 36 inch. And I can get two, this is four foot tall, so I'm going to get two two foot talls, which is going to be about the size of this little bed right here in front of me. But this is a four foot bed I made right in front of me. This is going to be a 36 inch bed. So I'm going to get me four more beds put up out here. But guys, just look at that. Five foot's just right. 
you can reach halfway to the center easily from any edge you want. Five foot's perfect. And I ain't for sure now if I want to cut this ring off the top and use this ring for something else or keep it this height. I'm going to have to think about this ring for a moment. Let's go over here and get us a watermelon. I got some watermelons. I need to take a break anyway. And guys, look at all these sugar baby watermelons. I don't know if y'all can see them down in there. But I bet you it's 50 or more. These little sugar babies, they don't get big. But they been good. They just little bitty hand-sized watermelons. I did have about the first four or five. They got a little bigger. They was about 10 inch in diameter. But all these other ones, that's about what size they are. Let's get over here in the shade and see if this thing's any good. Guys, I walked over to the water spigot and give it a little washing. But yeah, back to my beds. It's uh, I'm starting to refresh some of my beds, and I come across that. So I done pulled out some of them wick pots I had out in the garden this year. And I'm going to give some of my other ones a little work over. Guys, them right there is called sugar babies. Now, some people like big watermelons, but I like these little ones because I can cut one. Or I can stick two or three of these small ones in the ice box and cut them and eat the whole thing. You get a big watermelon, it, ends, it usually ends up wasting it. Sweet as sugar, man. <clears throat> I ain't no watermelon farmer, but I will say this is the best tasting watermelon that I've ever been able to grow. But guys, if you want you some good raised beds, I ain't gonna say you're gonna get lucky enough to get any free. But if you got any big construction sites around, you see any of that old pipe laying out there, like that 36 inch pipe, you see it's got damage on it. That's some pipe they had pulled out of the ground. A lot of times they will give you that, but you see it's damaged on the outside, but that's on the real. We'll go over in just a moment and look in the inside. That puncture ain't all the way through the inside, so even though it's got the little puncture on the outside, it'll hold dirt. Make awesome beds. And like I said, once you put one of them into a bed, I don't care if you, you live 100 years and you ain't going to outlive them. That's what's up under your roads. All your roads, cross drains and stuff. A lot of that's them, especially on your, not your state highways, but on your county roads and stuff. That's, that's the coverage they use. Back in the day, they used them metal galvanized covers. And yeah, they last years and years and years, but all of our roads nowadays, they done been there so many years, years and years, they all rusting and falling through, and that's what they're going back with. But I'm going to get these side where I want them. And I got some old treetops and stuff that I'd cut. I'm going to take my tractor and pull out cut me a bunch of limbs and wood and stack all in there and I don't know how much of that I'm gonna get done with them today because I got some of these ovens I want to change out the soil in and once I change the soil out I go on and put black plastic over it or either some of that ground fabric that way it can't grow up in weeds I mix in my rabbit poop and my quail poop and chicken poop. And mix all that up and put me a new layer of soil for next, whatever next time is. Something's going to be planted this fall or it'll be sitting there for the 
next spring and all that poop and stuff just makes better compost. But the next two or three days, that's what I'm working on is getting, getting some of this stuff set up and ready to go for next time. I gotta quit talking to y'all and eat this watermelon. Another thing I like about when you raise watermelons and you have that many, so you can just eat the heart out the good part. That watermelon can be thrown over in the bottom of that raised bed when I get it where I want it. Or I can go feed it to the chickens. That was better than a bottle of water, guys. All right, guys, I'm going to stand that one back up and get my saw out. I don't guess I got to stand it up. That's taller than I want to be. It. I'm going to cut that top ring off, and I can use that ring somewhere else out here and plant something in. Guys, that right there, if I don't want it round, I can make an oval sheet bed out of that. Look at that right there. Is that not snazzy? Now, guys, before I fill these up with dirt, I'm going to set them where I think I want them, and then I'm going to go get my tractor. And I'm going to make sure I can work myself through all of these, because I want to be able to get to every one of my big raised beds. That way, when I need to top them off, or if I want to clean that soil out one year and put some new composting soil in there, I want to be able to get my tractor with that little front end loaded to all these big beds. And them little wick tubs like sitting right there, See, I can take my dolly and I can move them. So I want my big ones spaced out. I can get my tractor around through them. I want everything spaced out. I can get my zero turn lawnmower through the mow. But the main thing is I can get that tractor to all these big beds. But right now I'm going to cut this one here. Like I was showing you, telling y'all a while ago, y'all see this is damaged on the outside. That's where they jabbed her track hoe trying to dig it up but you look in the inside of it it's got a couple places they cracked it through but it's nothing wrong for holding dirt so you may be able to go to a construction yard and you may be able to get you some of these for free because they dig them up and then they'll take them to their yard and they sit out there and Sooner or later, they got to find somewhere to do with them, bust them up and bury them or something. So a lot of times, they give you this kind of stuff. Even if you got to pay 5 or $10 for it, it's better than other little beds because it's going to last a lifetime. Now, after I get these set up, this summer, I plan on coming out here with my little electric paint gun to get me some paint and paint in them tin raised beds. This here, I can take my little heat gun and I can heat these little spots that it's busted and bend them in and make them look a little better. See, in these here, you gotta cut. You don't cut them on top of that reel, but if you do, you're gonna be too cutting through two layers. You cut them down in the bottom of the reel, and then you're only cutting through like a quarter inch or five sixteenth layer of plastic. <laughs> I drill my hole in there, that way I can get my saw blade in there to get started. But now we got us two three foot beds. So let me get these placed and I'm going to go get my tractor and get them placed where I wanted them. Then I'll get back with y'all when I start filling them up. Y'all 
Guys, I was just thinking. I need Isaac and Connor down here helping me. Isaac and Connor, that's the little southern brothers. Speaking of that, if y'all ain't went and checked out a little southern brothers, I'm gonna put it in the description below and I'm gonna attach it here on the screen. I would love for y'all to go check out a little southern brothers. It's two brothers and they're dead and their sister and their mom and their older brothers in some of their videos. But Isaac and Connor, I can't rightly remember. I think one is Isaac's 13 and Connor's 11. But they do logging. They drive them log skidders. They drive them log trucks. They get out there and help their dad work. They work in the sawmill. If y'all would, go over and check out their channel. Subscribe and support them little fellas. They some hard-working young men. And do me a favor, while you over there putting one of the comments on their videos at Poor Boy's Little Homestead sent, sent you over there so they know that uh, I was thinking about them today. Matter of fact, you can tell them I needed their help. And Isaac and Connor, if y'all watching this, y'all think I can come to Tennessee up there and bring my electric work saw? big log truck over there, my Cub Cadet, my little four foot trailer, but that's my log truck. And my, I guess my hen, my hinder there, that's my skitter pulling my logs out of the pile here so I can cut them up. <laughs> y'all think I can come up there and work with y'all and make a living? <laughs> I better get back to work. I got a lot of a little wood to cut here. the log truck has now arrived. I thought it was going to be a good day to do this. It's supposed to be cloudy all day. But the sun doesn't come out now. Tell my saw man he could have cut them a little shorter. But that guys, that right there is what we got so far. And now I'm gonna go get my tractor. And I'm gonna get me some some of that aged gin trash and aged cow manure that's all mixed up. And I put it in there and I try to fill the boys the best I could. That's the thing about fixing these raised beds, doing it like that. That first year they gonna settle. So that's one thing right now I'm getting to go on and fix them up. Top them off, cover them up, and they have time to settle. I'm gonna put that uh, ground fabric over the top. It'll keep the grass from growing up, but yet it'll let water when it rains and stuff, and it'll go on and get settled in there before, before I plant anything in these beds. Guys, now y'all see why I said I place this stuff where I can get my tractor around through there. Now y'all see as much work I put in building these beds why I want something that's going to last the rest of my life. I might dig some off the top later on when this gets through settling and redo it, but I don't want to ever have to redo this whole bed. Guys, you can just go to one of your big box stores, like Dollar Generals and stuff, when they get a shipment in and they got all them pasteboard boxes all folded up, stacked this high get you a stack of them and just stack them up in here solid. Do good. If paste pores starts breaking down, getting wet and breaking down and worms come to it. It holds all that moisture in there. Now guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to flood this with water. 
And that way, hopefully, it'll make some of that go in all them voids where I won't have as much settlement later. I think that's pretty good enough. What y'all think, guys? Well, guys, I got all of them full of wood this afternoon. But I decided I wasn't gonna cut no more wood over there dragging it out of them brush top. I killed two birds and one stone. I had some more limbs around here that was slapping me upside the head when I was trying to bush hog and mow. So I went around and whacking me some limbs off. And I got our other five foot bed full and our three foot bed full. And not only does that work out better, that gives me a lot of green leaves to mix, mix in there with that brown wood. And now the help it on starting to break down. And now I'm finna get back on the tractor and we're gonna top that three foot one off behind us and that other three foot one over yonder. That right there is a good, pretty raised bed, guys. So guys, right now I'm finna go on. I'm gonna do my other big one and them two little ones like this. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get my fabric. And I'll get back with y'all when I start putting the fabric and show you how I put my fabric and stick it around the edges. And then we're gonna be completed, this little job. All right, guys, so I got these four beds we built today in that horse trough right back there topped off with my potting mix and stuff now we finna cover them up now this right here is just ground fabric like you use in my garden over there and i'm gonna put it on these four beds because like i said i'm not gonna plant these beds this fall Come to spring, once I decide what I'm gonna plant in them, that'll determine if I'm gonna remove it or I'm gonna just take me a little torch and cut me a hole where I'm gonna plant stuff. But I'm gonna pull it up here. And all I'm gonna do, guys, is shove it down in the side. And sometimes I come back around and I'll put me some dirt right around this side just so the wind can't get under it and blow it off. You can take your little flat bar, guys. And after flooding this one, I think it's going to be in there good enough, I ain't gonna have to come around and put no dirt around the edge. I think it's sticking down in there good enough, it ain't gotta worry about it blowing off. Now this will be my first time. This year I didn't have enough of this fabric to do my raised beds over there. But I got to come across a road the other day. So this is going to be nice when you can just burn your hole and you ain't got to worry about picking no grass or no nothing out of it. And guys, this stuff's like putting on a mulch. It keeps your soil from drying out once you water it. It also keeps your soil cooler even though it's black because it keeps it moist in there so it keeps it cooler. And it's been very nice over in that garden this year. All 
my gosh. That looked like a good water bed, don't it? There she is, guys. I'm gonna try to get them other three covered up. But guys, this little boy done got tired today. Y'all didn't see the first thing I done. The first thing I done this morning was putting you plastic on this greenhouse. And I know y'all that's been following me, I just built that greenhouse. I can't rightly remember if that was somewhere in February, the end of February, maybe the first of March. But I was in a hurry when I built that. I gathered up all my stuff. And I built it because I had all my seedlings in the house and I got anxious and done it too early and my seedlings done got so big I done parted them up in big pots and I had a room in the house but nothing but just seedlings, tomatoes and peppers and all that. So I had to hurry up and build that greenhouse. And I knew I was messing up when I did this, guys. But I had some plastic that a fella had in his shop. And I knew better than to put that old plastic on there. But I was in a hurry and I didn't want to wait to order none. So I went on and put that old plastic on there. I said, well, surely I get, you know, this year and then next, this coming winter for 2021, 2022. But now I come out here the other day after one of them storms and it just done disintegrated. So I ordered me some new plastic and I got it redone this morning. So I done that before I started working on these raised beds we've been working on. And I am hot and tired. But guys, like I said, these right here is guaranteed lifetime raised beds. And if you can get you some of these pipe, especially if you can get a piece like this, this is a brand new piece, this five foot. But even if you get something like that three foot that they've dug out and can salvage you some pieces out of it, go around to these construction sites and ask them people because that that they've pulled out, they can't reuse, they gotta get rid of it anyway. But I wish I ever one of mine, even these that I've done with this tin. This tin's gonna last for years, but this right here, I figure my grandbaby, this will still be here when he gets my age, probably. But guys, I appreciate y'all watching. And don't forget, I'm gonna attach it right here, to go check out a little Southern Brothers. Y'all enjoy watching Isaac and Connor. And be sure to leave them a comment and tell him old poor boy sent you over there. You, you can tell them poor boy needed their help today too. Ask them do they have an old chainsaw that they ain't using because uh, he's over there trying to do some logging with a, uh, a work electric chainsaw. <laughs> but y'all communicate with them on their comments and I sure will appreciate that. And again, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this helps some of you out. Hope some of you can get your hands on some of this right here because I sure are going to try it again. I got my old cousin. I done told him any, any jobs he does, if he has any of this left over or, or some that he's dug up to give me a call and I'll come right there. And he said, he said, well, we throw this stuff away all the time. I said, man, all winter. I've been building raised beds and you've been throwing stuff like this away. You done lost your mind. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope y'all have had a great day. God bless. See y'all next time.